Hi, my name is Catherine Salazar and I'm a provisional deacon here at Christ United Methodist Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Our scripture reading for today is, comes from James chapter 1, verses 17 through 27, and I'm reading from the Passion Translation. Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect, streaming down from the Father of lights, who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness, and is never subject to change. God was dis delighted to give us birth by the truth of his infallible word so that we would fulfill his chosen destiny for us and become the favorite ones out of all his creation. My dearest brothers and sisters, take this to heart. Be quick to listen, but slow to speak. And be slow to become angry, for human anger is never a legitimate tool to tr promote God's righteous purpose. So this is why we abandon everything morally impure and all forms of wicked conduct. Instead, with a sensitive spirit, we absorb God's word, which has been implanted within our nature. For the word of life has power to continually deliver us. Don't just listen to the word of truth and not respond to it for that is the essence of self-deception. So always let his word become like poetry written and fulfilled by your life. If you listen to the word and don't live out the message you hear, you become like the person who looks in the mirror of the word to discover the reflection of his face in the beginning. You perceive how God sees you in the mirror of the word, but then you go out and forget your divine origin. But those who set their gaze deeply into the perfect law of liberty are fascinated by and respond to the truth they hear and are strengthened by it. They experience God's blessing in all that they do. If someone believes they have a relationship with God, but fails to guard his words, then his heart is drifting away and his religion is shallow and empty. True spirituality that is pure in the eyes of our Father God is to make a difference in the lives of others. To make a difference in the lives of the orphans and widows in their troubles and to refuse to be corrupted by the word's values. For the gift of scripture, we give thanks. Thanks be to God. The sermon series during the month of October in our church is based upon Bishop Schneezy's book, Five Practices of Fruitful Congregations. In week one, Pastor Dustin spoke about radical hospitality. This is a type of hospitality that exceeds the ordinary in welcoming others into the life of the church and into a deeper faith with Jesus Christ. In week two, Dustin spoke about passionate worship. Worship should express our devotion, our honor, and love of God. Passionate, describing an intense desire, strong feelings, and a sense of heightened importance and expectancy as people gather, vibrantly curious about how God's presence will become known during worship. Last week, we were blessed to hear from our certified lay minister, Susan Ideas, who talked about intentional faith development, developing caring relationships for each other, where we mutually come together to be the body of Christ. Susan asked for everyone to consider activities that they would like to see or to help guide in faith development. I hope you are making your list. And of course, a part of intentional faith development is knowing that the secret is in relationship, relationships, relationships. This week, I am speaking on the fourth practice of fruitful congregations, the practice of risk-taking mission and service, a practice fitting for a provisional deacon as deacons are called into ministries of word, service, compassion, and justice. Will you please join me in prayer? Gracious and merciful God, 
Guide my lips to proclaim your word, not in overbearing ways, but sensitively and lovingly. Equip us to be patient and compassionate listeners. Strengthen each of us with the Holy Spirit to be fruitful and active witnesses to your kingdom in all we say and do. Amen. Let's briefly visit Bishop Schneezy's thoughts on risk-taking. Risk-taking pushes us out of our comfort zone. It stretches us beyond the circle of relationships and practices that define our faith commitments. God uses risk-taking to reveal spiritual qualities and practical talents that we may never have discovered if we did not take the risk. The stretch of Christian discipleship is to love those for whom it is not automatic, to love those for whom it is not easy, to love those for whom it is not common or accepted within our society to love, to love those who don't think or live like us, and to express respect, compassion, and mercy to those we don't know and who may never be able to repay us. Jesus taught us to be risk takers. He healed those who were sick rather than shy away from them. Healing a leper, healing the woman who touched his robe, healing by casting out demons, healing by raising people from death. Jesus invited those on the margins to be a part of his ministry. He invited tax collectors, women, and children to learn and serve with him. Jesus challenged those in power, people who were more concerned about the process of law than they were about loving others. He showed us how to take a risk by not judging others, but by loving them. In today's scripture, James calls us to listen to refrain from speaking, and to refrain from displays of anger. He calls us to a higher standard than the one we currently possess. We are to be risk takers, to be doers of the word, because we, as followers of Jesus, have a great responsibility. Our work as Christians is never done. Be quick to listen. Many of us have been in situations where we were quick to react, whether with our thoughts, words, or actions, which may have led to deep-seated jealousy or anger, hurt feelings, or broken relationships. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we read about Elijah's time in the wilderness as he's running from people who desire him to die. He ends up in a cave waiting to meet with God, a mighty wind, powerful earthquake, and intense fire did not distract Elijah as he was listening for the voice of God. Then a whisper comes, and Elijah goes to the cave opening to meet with God. Had Elijah simply reacted to the natural disasters around him and not practiced self-control, he may have missed the whispering of God in his midst. How often do we practice self-control? Do we listen to what is around us? Not only to the loud voices, you know, the voices of news broadcasts or the voices of our preferences on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, or Twitter. These loud voices that come from politicians or other organizations with a one-sided agenda. Do we listen to what is around us in the voices that come in whispers? And what exactly are we listening for? When we hear someone complain, are we listening to the complaint or to the situation behind the complaint? I once taught a very angry young man who spoke with foul language and struggled to control his emotions. His behaviors intensified as the school year came to a close. I listened to his tense body language, his saddened facial expressions, and the tone of his voice in his everyday speaking. After working with him for two years, 
I knew something wasn't right. And after being unable to reach his family, I took a, a colleague and we took a risk to visit them at their apartment. Standing at the doorway, looking into a room filled with small boxes, I listened to mom explain about their impending eviction, about their lack of housing after the eviction in less than a week. The future of this family was unknown and the behaviors I watched, my listenings, suddenly they made sense. The next days were spent connecting this family with much needed resources. How do we listen for the voice of God in our midst? Be quick to listen, be slow to speak. As we listen to the words, actions, and emotions of others, we must think through our own words, whether in audible speech or in writing, typing, texting, messaging. If we use our words to accuse or destroy others, to express hatred, and to speak evil against someone else, we are not building up the kingdom of God. Our words reveal who we are and to whom we belong. Shouldn't our motivation be to bring others to a closer relationship with God? Shouldn't our intentions be to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world? What we say has the power to destroy others, tearing others away from the kingdom of God and tearing ourselves away as well. How often have we heard good Christian people speak poorly about another person or group of people? Have we heard people dehumanize others with their words, calling a police officer a pig, or referring to a refugee as illegal or alien, or take any of the derogatory names for gender, ethnic, or racial differences? I have witnessed countless people in authority crush someone's spirit with their words. I have done this myself. In my first years of teaching, a young, high schooler, a young high schooler had lost his father in a serious car accident. When he stood in front of me, telling me, you don't understand what I'm going through. I am not completing your assignment. I was not slow to speak, and I responded in a very unkind way. I didn't listen to this young man and witness to his pain. Instead, I took offense at his words. I took offense at his defiance. He walked away, understandably losing further faith in our educational system and losing faith in his teacher. I grieve that I could not take a risk to love, that my authoritative pride would not allow me to be God's witness to this young man in his very broken and hurting world. But what we say also has the power to build others up, therefore building up the kingdom of God. To the suffering, like this young man, we can listen and respond with kind words to those who have made poor choices for themselves. We can listen and respond with kind words. To those who live their lives in systemic oppression, we can listen and respond with kind words. Jesus met with a woman at a well, a woman who made poor decisions for her life, and he listened. Then he responded with loving forgiveness. He responded with the kindness she needed to make great changes in her life and in the lives of others. As we seek to build God's kingdom, we have to continue to listen to others and respond with words of loving kindness. We have to take risks to step out of our comfort zones to meet people 
and love them where they are. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, be slow to anger. If we are listening and using words of kindness that build up God's kingdom, anger subsides. When people feel they are truly listened to, God opens a door in their lives. Those experiencing loss and fear gain hope. Those who witness the pain of the world upon being heard begin to feel empowered to make changes. We must use words of loving kindness. We must witness in compassion and mercy to the love of God present in our world. And as we continue to be a witness to the love of God, our own anger subsides into peace as the presence of the Lord fills all of us with joy. In verse 21, James tells us how to release anger, to abandon everything morally impure and all forms of wicked conduct. We need to absorb God's word, which has been implanted within each of us, for we were all formed in the image of God. The word of God must be read and studied, no matter our age or the longevity or newness of our faith stories. Paul, in his letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, tells us to be in the same mind as Christ Jesus, who emptied himself as we empty ourselves to God. Jesus, taking on the form of a slave, humbled himself to the point of death on the cross, as we should take the risks to humble ourselves to do the will of God in this world. In emptying ourselves, we release our own pain and anger, remembering that God is at work and in each and every one of us. We can follow the words of James and be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. But we also need to be doers of the word. What we say and do matters in this world. The actions that we take for the kingdom of God add value to our words of loving kindness. And so we are called to take risks, to look into the world and love outrageously. One statement I read said, we are called to look intently into the world and to persist in loving action. Loving action is not about passing judgment, but taking risks to walk alongside those we deem to be other, or those not in our comfort zone. For some of us, other is the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning plus, or LGBTQ plus community. For some of us, other is the human trafficked slave. For some of us, other is the drug addict or alcoholic. For some of us, other is the homeless person in our midst. We are called to live differently, not in judgment of others, but to live differently in our responses to others in the world. We can live differently by becoming informed about those we do not understand and or helping at a local care center. Here are a few examples. The Transgender Resource Center of New Mexico is a community-based nonprofit organization that provides education and training as well as services to people and their families. If you regard the LGBT plus community as other, you may want to connect with and learn from this organization or the New Mexico Dream Center. This is a nonprofit organization designed to help homeless youth and trafficked minor children by providing social services to restore their dreams and hopes. If you regard the human trafficked slave as other, you may want to connect with this, with this organization and learn from them. Or healing addiction in our community this is a local organization that works to transform the community through connections 
advocacy and education to prevent substance abuse, especially among minors. If you regard the drug addict or alcoholic as other, you may want to connect with and learn from this organization. Or the Interfaith Bible Center, located not far from our own church, this is a church that supports our homeless brothers and sisters with hot meals, clothing, Bible study, prayer, and comforting witness. If you regard the homeless community as other, you may want to connect with and learn from this organization. Or Saranam, an organization supported by Central United Methodist Church whose goal is to break the cycle of generational homelessness and poverty by transforming the lives of families experiencing homelessness. If you regard homeless children or their parents as other, you may want to connect with and learn from this organization. These are five of many organizations that began by people taking a risk, stepping out of their comfort zones to show loving kindness to others in need. I was once told by an administrator, Catherine, you can't save everyone. And I'm reminded of this story by Lauren Isley. One day a man was walking along the beach when he noticed a boy picking something up and gently throwing it into the ocean. Approaching the boy, he asked, what are you doing? The youth replied, throwing starfish back into the ocean. The surf is up and the tide is going out. If I don't throw them back, they'll die. Son, the man said, don't you realize there are miles and miles of beach and hundreds of starfish? You can't make a difference. After listening politely, the boy bent down, picked up another starfish and threw it back into the surf. Then, smiling at the man, he said, I made a difference for that one. We, as individuals, might not have the capacity to make a difference for every person in the world. But we can step out of our comfort zones. We can take risks and bear witness to the living Christ that dwells within each of us. And we can do this together as Christians by listening intently, thinking before we speak, being slow to anger, and being doers of the word that dwells within us, we can make a difference in the lives of others. We can be the hands and feet of God in this world, transforming this world, living out the kingdom of God. May God take our minds and think through them, take our lips and speak through them, and take our hearts and set them on fire with loving kindness towards others. Amen.